Hey guys, to celebrate the release of World of Warcraft Legion, today we're going to go back to where it all began. I speak, of course, of vanilla World of Warcraft, the original boxed version. So, of course, we can see on the front we have two uh, iconic races from Warcraft, although slightly random choices, I always thought. Of course, we have the Night Elves, and we have the Dwarves. And the thing that I really love about this box is that they went to such an immense level of detail that all these different objects are actually beveled to different heights. So if you actually run your fingers along them, you can actually feel the texture of different objects. Like, I can feel the texture of this uh, sort of, you know, fancy little beveled bit here. And it's all kind of sticking out. And the dwarf actually sticks out further than all the other uh, background objects. So it's a really cool layered box. I, I really love the attention to detail here. And of course the artwork is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it certainly captures the feel of Warcraft. And of course at the time, uh, yeah, this was the start of something new. It was a spin-off game. And uh, not the, the main focus of the series. So of course, first off, the play included, internet connection required, additional online fees apply. And of course, made by Blizzard Entertainment. But what I do love, and this is something that Blizzard still does, you actually open up the box. And here you get the Dark Portal. Well, not actually the Dark Portal, but it's something very similar to it. So this is what was on the title screen of the game. So enter the world of Warcraft. And this is what I love, you fold it out and you get all these pictures of all these different things you can do in the world of Warcraft. And it's just a very cool approach. So, over here, you can see that, uh, for example, we have, uh, you know, just how easy is it to begin your epic quest online? One, create. Create your own unique hero from one of eight player races and nine different player classes. Connect. Enter the world with one quick access to Blizzard's dedicated World of Warcraft game network. Free, engage. Whether you're a novice or a veteran, the world of bold adventure and mighty deeds awaits. And if you only have a few minutes to play, with its superior quest system ensures an adventure is always waiting. Ha! Ha! Uh, yes, that's not entirely accurate, but I do love this uh, picture from the game, which looks very cool, of a, a dwarf with a flame sword and a human uh, warlock using uh, some buffs there and fighting this cool yeti monster. This all looks very cool, and they actually do have little uh, blurbs up there that explain the UI. Because, of course, uh, MMOs weren't quite as prolific at this point as they are now. You can see some great uh, stuff from Juratar in the background there, I believe. Okay, and then we have some screenshots of uh, things like, uh, you know, Shredders epitomize the lethal power of Goblin Ingenuity. There are, were not many Shredders in vanilla World of Warcraft. Um, that shot is actually one that got me really excited, I remember, and it was not real... It was very hard to find a Shredder in vanilla World of Warcraft. Choose your allegiance, then wage relentless assaults with your allies in arms. And of course, I, I do appreciate there is a battle of the crossroads in that picture. Uh, that certainly takes me back. Um, dragon raids require strength, skill, and a hero's courage. Except, you know, that kind of makes it sound like dragons attack settlements or something like that, and, you know, that, that was never really a thing. Also, that guy looks awfully like a demon hunter. Something which also was not in the game. <laughs> And of course we've got another shot there of some Night Elves and some uh, some Horde guys. Of course, uh, Trolls had Raptors and... Uh, oh yes, the Warlock of course still had his Fiery Horse and the other Orc had his Wolf. So just showing off some of the cool stuff you could do in World of Warcraft. Sort of, anyway. <laughs> I just always find the Shredder one very random. But anyway, so on the side you can see we actually continue the map aesthetic. And uh, we still have the World of Warcraft logo. And uh, what I do love here is it says Windows 98, ME, 2000, XP, and Macintosh. Would World of Warcraft still work on Windows 98? I have to wonder that. It would be very cool if it did. <laughs> okay, so up here we've just got some very tiny terms and conditions. Because again, MMOs, it was kind of a new thing. And, uh, well, not, not a new thing exactly. Of course, things like EverQuest had been around, but it was, it was a new thing to a lot of people, myself included. Uh, for the most part, anyway, I, I played a few little things before. Okay, standard edition. And uh, then we have system requirements, uh, the Vendor Universal Games Australia. I guess they, uh, well, of course they, they had something to do with it. And then on the back, you know, a world awaits. Descend into the world of Warcraft and join thousands of mighty heroes in an online world of myth, magic, and limitless adventure. Jagged snowy peaks, mountain fortresses, harsh winding canyons. Zeppelins flying over smoldering battlefields, epic sieges, an infinity of experiences await. So what are you waiting for? That was so captivating at the time. Like, there was really nothing quite on the scale of World of Warcraft. And that's kind of always what I 
I, I kind of remember from this era, it was just sort of the potential of World of Warcraft and things like that, which I certainly don't think it ever really reached, despite its immense popularity and money-making power. So, you know, embark on epic quests, hundreds of custom quests with more being added all the time. Of course, that was the idea of an MMO back then. It was that you paid a monthly subscription and then you got, you, you know, you got constant stream of new content. It was like buying a game every single month, but buying additional content for it. Uh, of course, form powerful alliances. Place or so enlist fellow heroes to join forces with you as you negotiate the vast battle-scarred landscape of a world at war. Engage an ever-changing world. Blizzard's dedicated live team creates a constant stream of new adventures to untake, lands to explore, and monsters to vanquish. The epic quest never ends. Unless you're playing Warlords of Draenor. <laughs> okay, and of course, indulge in seamless beauty. Explore expansive environments that are, in a word, legendary. The World of Warcraft graphics engine renders the game universe seamlessly, so you spend your time adventuring, not waiting. And of course, to be fair, World of Warcraft actually did look pretty good for the time. Uh, it certainly just shows its age a lot now. Oh, they do some pretty good stuff with expansions. Okie dokie. So inside the box, we have the disc. And uh, you can see we've got a free 10-day guest pass. Invite a friend to quest with you. And, uh, of course, we've got the CD key, which is, of course, already registered to my Battle.net. So uh, no point trying that out. That was registered a very long time ago. World of Warcraft on the side. And uh, inside, we just we do have the discs, and if I can actually get them out, because this is always one of the fun things, they're in these paper sleeves. So we had artwork of a human, and uh, if I can actually get it out here. This was the CD version. There was also a DVD version later on that didn't require four discs, but uh, this is what I was stuck with, because I didn't have a DVD-ROM drive at the time. That's how long ago this was. In fact, I, I started World of Warcraft on dial-up. So... <laughs> And of course we have some cool Torrent artwork there. I think that's, uh, I, I can't, I can never remember his last name, but, uh, I know his first name's Samwise, who was basically the, the Blizzard artist who kind of got their look down. Okay, so of course we got a troll, looking very cool, nothing wrong in the back. We got some artwork of a dwarf there, again looking very, very cool. I always love the old school look of uh, the Warcraft universe, I don't really think World of Warcraft does a great job of capturing that now. Okay, so we've got a, a very uh, busty-looking Night Elf uh, woman. And we actually get some very cool artwork of Sylvanas there, the Dark uh, the Banshee Queen. Dark Queen or Banshee Queen? I can never quite remember that. And then we have Disc 4 with uh, some cool dwarf artwork. And you can actually see it even shows Dunmorrow and Ironforge in the background. And we actually get what looks to be like a Death Knight or something. It looks very similar to Arthas to me. And he's kind of got the skull there on his uh, armor, but I don't know if he's supposed to be a paladin or what. But again, very, very, very cool artwork. Okay. Now, this was something that was legendary at the time. The World of Warcraft Manual. This thing is ridiculous. Honestly, like, it is the, <laughs> the most massive manual I think I've ever come across. And it has... So much detail. You can see here, it's like inst okay, installation, creating an account, getting started, advanced user interface, all that stuff. You have the races, talents, skills, the world, adventuring, community, PvP, appendices. And this is the real thing. Appendices, of course, you know, history, races in conflict, glossary of terms. And it just, it really just goes on and on and on. Uh, <laughs> a special note on dying. No matter how good an adventurer you are, eventually you will know the sting of death. Thankfully, death in the World of Warcraft isn't permanent. <laughs> and of course, things have changed uh, in different ways from there, but you can see we actually get some... Uh, it's all in black and white, but you do get some cool screenshots. And there is actually artwork. If I can actually find it, it might be in the appendices later on, but... Yeah, this, this very much follows this sort of style of the Warcraft uh, 2 and 3 manuals, which kind of really had a lot of information about the world and the game and, like, all the units back then and things like that. We have, uh, actually some maps here, which is very, very cool. Southern Kalimdor, uh, <laughs> good old Anchorage. Uh, Northern Kalimdor, of course. Lordaeron. With, uh, Quelf you can even see, like, Quelphalasses on there, even though it wasn't in the game at that point. Although, uh, my friend and I certainly tried to find it. Uh, Cosmodan. And uh, Azeroth, well, 
<laughs> That's interesting, actually. They caught Azeroth there, but it's really just for lower half of the uh, the Eastern Kingdoms. I believe Azeroth used to be just part of the world rather than actually a term for the world. And then we have, of course, uh, the, the face of World of Warcraft in a lot of cases, this uh, CGI orc, who was on a lot of things at the time. But beyond that, we then get to history, and we have some great artwork, and we, you know, a brief overview of the Third War and the founding of the New Age. So this really set the scene. It covers Warcraft 3, uh, like Archimonde's Return, the Flight to Kalimdor, uh, the Fourth, Call for Last, Scourge of Lordaeron, you know, all the good stuff from Warcraft 3. And uh, it has a little bit of artwork here and there. So it's just a, a nice uh, kind of background to uh, you know, World of Warcraft. And of course, this was our, our first look at what would happen after Frozen Throne. And as far as I understand it, the original idea for World of Warcraft was basically just to be a side story. It was like, oh, you can run around World of Warcraft and we'll have hints for Warcraft 4, but then Warcraft 4 will be coming and it'll continue the story. Of course, World of Warcraft was way too successful for that, so things changed rather dramatically. But you can see, currently Arthas, the new and immortal Lich King, resides in Northrend. He is rumoured to be rebuilding the Citadel of Iceground. His trusted lieutenant, Kelfazard, commands the Scourge in the Plaguelands. Sylvanas and her rebel forsaken hold only the Tirisfall Glades, a small portion of a war-torn kingdom. And of course we wouldn't really come to that until about four years later, with uh, Wrath of the Lich King. It would have been at least four years later when I think about it, actually. And then races in conflict, so humans, and we actually get like maps of Stormwind and things like that, so that's really cool. This is what the, uh, the in-game maps used to look like. We have like main major characters, King Anduin Rin. Uh, Jaina Proudmoore, of course. Uh, you have the dwarves. You know, just lots of cool stuff. It's a really detailed manual. I think if you're a Warcraft fan... Well, you've probably read this at some point, to be honest. That's uh, kind of weird artwork. It, may, it certainly makes the Tauren look freaky, doesn't it? But uh, I think it's supposed to be related to PvP and uh, world PvP particularly. So, uh, you know, Night Elf was camping and a Tauren attacked her. But, uh, yeah, we've got some, <laughs> some orc renders down there, uh, some torrent artwork. And yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much just like that. Undead, uh, <laughs> the undead in the game certainly don't quite look like that. They look a little bit more, uh, shall we say, decomposed. Oh, yes, and back at the time when, you know, Varuma Frass, uh, the Dreadlord was, uh, working with Sylvanas and things like that. Ah, the good old days of Warcraft lore. But, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And we actually have a handy little hotkey page. Movement keys, chat functions, interface panel functions, all that good stuff on back here, which was very helpful at the time. I remember using this. Aside from that, my my original receipt. And uh, from EB Games. I think we'll just leave that like that. And uh, that's really it. So that is your look at World of Warcraft, the original version. And, uh, you know, this was certainly... This and Burning Crusade were definitely my best times in World of Warcraft. Uh, even though the game is really technically much better than it was back then. I mean, like, certainly questing is infinitely better now and things like that. Travel, lots of things. Um, the game certainly had a much more open feel back in the day. It was kind of... You didn't really follow a quest line from, you know, region to region and stuff like that. You just kind of discovered quests that were appropriate for your level. And, um... I know, it felt much more free-flowing and free-form, and I used to, I loved the, you know, the concept of world PvP. Uh, even though it was a bit of an unbalanced mess, at the same time, the idea of just kind of, you know, having these big wars in the middle of nowhere, or like, you know, the crossroads in the barrens, that was always a point of hot, uh, you know, that was a hotbed of battles. It was just a really cool element, and, yeah, they had a few world events at the time, they did a bit more of that sort of thing back then, uh, like the opening of the gates of Ankaraj. More so, the, ne the Necropolis, Kelfazard's Necropolis, uh, in patch 1.12. And there was a really steady stream of content at that point. Uh, they were constantly kind of, you know, doing big updates and adding things like, you know, things we take for granted now, like battlegrounds and stuff like that. So, I, I kind of definitely feel like this was a really good time for World of Warcraft, despite the game having its own problems. But that's all from me, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.